Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Thomas Ryan. I live in Myrtle Beach. And for the last month, I've been being harassed by the police and by my former landlord and the people who work at Fried Lamb. It's a trash slumlord garbage company. But, uh, see, what happened was, I'm going to tell you guys the full story. Um, I had a, a bunch of guys getting drunk in front of my house one night. And I'm a disabled veteran with uh, mental health issues and, you know, anxiety attacks and stuff like that. This is after I made a complaint against my landlord for being a slumlord. So I no doubt, after everything that I have discovered, know that she sent these guys to try to intimidate me. But anyway, here goes the story. So, um, these three guys are getting drunk in front of my house. I have a panic attack, I leave. And then, uh, uh, I call the cops I'm on them. I drive around for an hour and a half. I come back. I'm seeing three guys are just sitting in front of my house getting drunk. So uh, I say, you know, call the cop. I asked him, I said, you know, what are you guys doing here? Why are you in front of my house? Why are you drinking alcohol? You know, what do you want? Can you go get drunk in front of your own house, please? And they're so drunk that they, uh, they're like offering me a beer, like I want to party with them or something. And now I really don't drink because my, my dad was killed by a drunk driver. So I don't like to drink because it, it reminds me of that. And then I get all pissed off and I become an asshole when I think about it. Because it's, it's just fucked up that my dad was killed by someone and, you know, this person didn't have, you know, probation. I don't, nothing happened to them at all. At least that's what I was told. Because I don't really know, because this was when my mom was pregnant with me. So, anyway, back to the story. So, I confront the guys, and they're so inebriated, they offering me alcohol. And then I say to them, I said, uh, you know, can you guys please go get drunk? You know, and then they, just, they, they just, like, they barely spoke English. They were Latin, just like my former landlord, Miriam who has been sending people to harass me nonstop on the internet. The cops have been harassing me nonstop. I get followed everywhere I go. But anyway, back to the story. <clears throat> so these guys, they're pissing me off. So I say I'm gonna call the cops again. And they're all drunk and they jump in their truck and they drive away. Drunk driving in a, a truck with a thousand pound trailer on the back with all kinds of uh, concrete equipment. <clears throat> so, uh, I say, I call the cops back again. And I say, you know, <laughs> those guys, they just drove away drunk. Why didn't you do anything? And the guy says, well, I sent the unit. I don't know why he didn't do anything about it, but, uh, you know, uh, I'll find out. And I wasn't satisfied with that answer. So I said, I asked for his badge number. And, uh, I asked... I told them I'm going to come in there the next morning and file a complaint. So, basically, I go in the shower because I'm, I'm still shook about this. So I go in the shower and, uh, you know, it's like my house is having a fucking earthquake. I can't figure out what's going on. I jump out of the shower and there's two cops banging on my door so hard that it, it's shaking my whole house. Okay, so I go downstairs, I answer the door. And in my opinion, the whole reason they're, they're trying to intimidate me into not going to make the report, the way they're posturing towards me, the way they kept inching closer, and just the look in their eyes, like, I could tell they were, like, pissed off just to have them even talk to me, you know, because of the report and everything. Uh, I guess Miriam must be, like, connected or something, you know, or fried lamb. They must have connections in the police force or something. So, um, after that, 
mess. I'm not intimidated. I tell them what's up, and I tell them I'm going to go in there and fill out the report, you know. They leave. I go there the next morning. I tell them I don't want to get anyone in trouble, but I want it down on paper. <clears throat> and you know what the cop does that I talk to? He does nothing. He doesn't write down a goddamn thing. Not one thing. So, <clears throat> yeah. You know, I'm a disabled veteran. I got a honorable discharge. I got a 100% disability rating, but yet I can't get the cops to, to make an arrest when people are breaking the law. Because it's illegal to have open alcohol in the streets. Okay? And it did nothing about it. So this continues, continues. I go, and then, like, I keep fighting with my landlord. And, and like, she, she's just so acting like a child. You know, she's telling me, if I don't like it, why don't I move out? There's all kinds of evidence I've posted on my Facebook. You know, so if anyone doesn't believe me or they want to say this is bullshit, I'll give you access to my Facebook and you can look at it and see all the evidence yourself. But I was forced to live in like a slum apartment with all kinds of mold everywhere for years. And, you know, I finally had enough because I had given them so much time to, to fix the issues. And they just kept, you know, oh, yeah, we'll do it next month. We'll do it next month. We'll do it next month. So I finally got sick of it, and I said, no, you're going to do it now, or I'm going to file a complaint. And they refused to do it, so that's why I filed, I filed the complaint. And then ever since that, I've been getting harassed by the cops. I've been getting harassed by my landlord. I get harassed whenever I go out of the house. I get followed. <clears throat> and, you know, just to, just to tell you how crazy this is, the other night... I was down at Duffy's, which is right next to, uh, what's it called? I can't remember where it's next to. It's a, it's a little bar right next to, uh, it's right by the boardwalk. But anyway, I'm in there. I'm, I'm not, I had a few drinks, so I'm buzzed. And there's these, this bunch of guys are in there. And I had been in there for like three or four nights in a row. And really, it's not their type of place anyway. Like, but I could tell that they were like off-duty cops. But they looked. They, the way they were dressing, they dressed like they were golfers. So they were trying to, like, fool me into thinking that they were, like, a tourist or something like that. You know, and these guys are, like, talking so loud. And I can hear everything they're saying. And they're saying stuff that only people that knew me would know. Like, personal information about me. And then one guy called me a clown. He said I was dressed like a clown and all this other stuff. So I said to him, I said, you know, what's your problem? You got a problem with me, sir? And he like, and then he starts back. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is going because of all this shit that's been going on. So he starts to backtrack and say, "Oh no, I was talking about myself. I didn't. I wasn't talking about you." Oh, and I say, "Okay, I'm sorry. Let me apologize." And I'm I'm about to be like, "Let me buy you a beer because I feel bad." The guy just like flips out, like snaps, starts cursing at me. He won't even shake my hand. He doesn't accept my apology. Next thing I know, like all these guys, they're still grilling me. They're still fucking giving me a hard time. So I was like, you know what? I'll be outside. So I went outside to talk to my friend, to tell him someone I thought was my friend, but I don't really think he is anymore. But that doesn't really matter. So I went outside to talk to him because I was worried. that I was like, there's like 10 guys in there that want to fight me. So, uh, uh, so when I come back in the bar, one of them grabs me like three or four times. And he just keeps grabbing me like he's patting me down like a cop would do. So I ask him, I said, why do you keep grabbing me, man? Like, do you work here? Why are you grabbing me? And he's like, would, would you go outside and grab? I said, I didn't go outside and grab anything. I went outside to talk to my friend. And all I had in my hand was my hat and a drink. And they're like accusing me of having a weapon on me. And I'm like, I don't have a weapon on me, so I don't know what you're talking about, sir. And then this other guy is like all up on me. He's like bumping into me and shit. Like, you know how guys get when they posture, when they're, when they're going to fight. This is what this guy is doing to me. So I pushed him out of my way. 
And I guess they didn't really like that too much. And um, I left because I didn't, I had respect for Duffy's. I didn't want to fight in the bar. You know, so I said, you know, I'll be outside if you really want to fight me. And then finally, like, I calmed down. I went down by the beach. I prayed. I talked to God. And, you know, God said I should just leave. And that's what I did. I left. <clears throat> and then when I walk away, these, uh, these guys, you know, it, it, it dawns on me that I'm missing 80 bucks from my pocket. And I'm like, well, where the fuck did my money go? You know? And I'm like, oh my God, those guys must have fucking robbed me. That's why that guy kept grabbing me and patting me down because he took my fucking 80 bucks. Right? So I, I call the cops. I have them come down to the bar. And then, you know, I tell him what happened. He goes inside, says he talks to, you know, people in the bar. And they all say that I'm a liar. And what I say didn't happen. And that it happened completely different. That I started the whole fight. That it was all me. And, you know, I did say some things because I was buzzed. But I didn't start the fight because these guys were grilling me, trying to antagonize me and trying to get me to fight them. They, they wanted me to... to uh, to, to, to go crazy and flip out and just basically attack them so that I could, they have a reason to arrest me. Like, they, they, they've been doing this to me for like a month now. And it happens everywhere I go. It happens at the VA. It happens at, uh, you know, the bar. I get followed. My landlord keeps fucking having people harass me online. And it turns out that, you know, the whole, whole, I've been getting, trying, these girls have been trying to catfish me, like, all, non-stop, like, five, six, seven of them a day. Like, non-fucking-stop. And it turns out, you know, I, 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 I background-checked all these people. And it turns out a lot of them are related to Miriam, who works, who is my former landlord, who got a promotion for what she did to me, which was mock a disabled veteran to his face. And, um... Tell me if I didn't like it to just move the fuck out in the middle of the street, you know, and they keep lying about me. They keep slandering me. They keep fucking saying that I'm, I have weapons and I'm walking around with weapons, threatening people and stuff like that. Like they're doing everything they possibly can to try to get me arrested is what they're doing. And I'm not giving them that satisfaction. I just keep staying calm and I keep telling them, you know, what, what happened. <clears throat> And I even went to IA today, you know, because once it, once it dawned on me that these guys were cops, I knew that was my only chance. You know, I, I felt like my life was in danger, that the police were going to try to kill me. And, you know, I really do feel that way, that the police are going to try to kill me, the Myrtle Beach Police Department. So, you know, that's what I've been going, that's what I've been dealing with all this time now. For, for a month. Non-stop harassment. Non-stop. It doesn't end. You know, I got all these chicks harassing me online. Other people harassing me online. And it turns out they're all related to Miriam. It also turns out that one of them is married to a cop. I wonder if she's married to a Myrtle Beach cop. Now, I'm going to show you her picture. Okay? I'm going to show you what she looks like. So, if any of you guys do know her, and she, if she is married to a Myrtle Beach cop, it only proves my story to be even truer than I've already been telling you. Like, it is crazy what has been going on, but, like, when the light turned on, I knew exactly what was going on. And when I went into the, the precinct today to talk to the chief, because you got to file the chain of command to, uh, make a complaint with SLED or IA. It's called SLED here in uh, in South Carolina, I guess. <clears throat> uh, turns out uh, one of the guys who was at the bar was working the desk that day when I walked in. And I even told the chief, I was like, that's one of the guys right there. He was in the bar that night. And like the look on his face was like he had seen a fucking ghost. You know, like, like he, he, he realized that uh, 
that I fucking knew what the fuck was going on. Oh yeah, here here's the one that she's married to a cop. Now I wonder, uh, you know, who which which cop she's married to is it a Myrtle Beach police cop or is is uh, am I wrong? I don't really know because I'm going by what the uh, background check told me. The background check told me that she used to be a uh, a call girl an escort, and you know, like I said, that the harassment doesn't stop. I thought that I made a deal with one of the guys from Friedland who owned Carolina Breeze today, and he promised me that the harassment would stop and that he would talk to them and make it go away, and he didn't. And that's why I'm continuing this now, because I was going to just stop. I was going to leave. I was going to go away. But, you know, he told me that the harassment was going to stop, and it didn't. It keeps going and going. It, it never fucking ends. So I don't know what to do. You know, I went, like I said, I went to SLED, which is IA. For those of you who don't know what SLED is. And um, it, it, it's crazy, you know, it really is that I feel like I, my life is in danger because of these clowns, okay? Like, it, it's, it's, it's so bad that like, I'm worried about people that, I, that care about me because they're not gonna get to me. If they do kill me, I'm gonna go straight to heaven. So I'm not worried about that, you know? I'm not worried about dying. Oh, I'm not worried about that. So what they're gonna probably do next is go after people I care about. And it sucks, you know, because it, all this would have been avoided if, you know, Miriam would have just done her job. And then I would have never had to file. <clears throat> I never would have had to file the complaint with the uh, city to begin with. And then, you know, I wouldn't have to be harassed for, you know, over a month. It's probably been over a month, to be honest with you. I don't even know how long it's actually been going on. But, you know, I feel like it's, it's been going on for probably closer to two months than one month. But, um, you know, it's, it's just nonstop. So I, I really don't know what to do, you know. I hope I, you know, SLED, I hope they do help me. I talked to a lawyer today. Hopefully that lawyer doesn't get scared and drop my case because it seems like every time I try to talk to a lawyer, they just, they drop my case. Like, I'll talk to me for a while, and then they'll drop my case, you know. So I, it's like I'm screwed. No matter what I do, like, you know, like it's serious, like I feel like I'm going to get killed for this. But uh, like I said, I, I'm not scared. I'm prepared to go to heaven, you know. But it, it, it's not the point. The point is, is that, you know, I shouldn't have to live like this. You know, I served my country. I got an honorable discharge. I got a 100% disability rating. And these guys, they're just doing everything in their power they can to, to, to fuck with me. And it's not fair. So I don't really know what to do. You know, these people at Fried Lamb and Miriam and her connections, you know, I got, it's nuts. I've been getting harassed and catfished by these women, like these incredibly beautiful women. And they just keep trying to catfish me every fucking day. Like, Send me money, do this, do that. It's like, no, bitch, I'm not going to send you fucking money. You know, I'm not a fucking idiot, man. I may have been born at night, but not fucking last night. So, no, I will not send you money. And they keep, like, trying to make me fall in love with them and shit like that. It's just insane shit. It's, like, crazy. It's This is, like, the shit that a fucking movie is, is made from. You know, my life should be a fucking movie with the shit that they've been doing to me. Uh, and then you can look in my eyes. I ain't fucking lying. I got nothing to lie about. You know? I have nothing to lie about. Yeah. You know, all I did was make a report to the city because my landlord is a slumlord. And now my life's in fucking jeopardy because of it. And it's bullshit. It really is. And I, and I really don't know what else to say at this point, you know, without giving away my case because I got to, you know, I'm talking to a lawyer. So I really don't know what to do at this point, you know, and uh, for anyone that, that might get affected by this or 
you know, whatever is going to happen, you know, I, I apologize to you because it was never my intention to, to drag anyone else in this besides me. But I really feel that when uh, they realize that I don't care what they do to me and they're not going to get me to stop, that they're going to go after the people I care about. So, you know, I'm sorry if this affects you in a negative way. I really am. But I don't know what else to do at this point. These cops, they just keep fucking with me nonstop. The people on the internet, they keep fucking with me nonstop. I, I feel like I haven't fucking got a good night's sleep in, you know, a month. Because of it, I, stay, I have to stay up all night because I can't trust anyone. I can't trust anyone. Like all this, this, this fucking mental anguish that is being caused by this, to me, is ridiculous. You know, if it wasn't for my love for God, you know, I probably would have lost it already. You know, that's probably the only saving grace for me is, you know, God. That's it. You know, because without Him, I, I probably, you know, I'd be dead. So. You know, those of you who care about me or, you know, please share this message and let everyone know what, what's going on here. You know, because the police, they think they can get away with whatever they want because they have a badge. And it's not fair. It's not fair what they do to people. You know, it's really not. And I'm not just talking about me. I'm talking about all people. It's not fair what they do. They get away with so much shit because they have a badge and they try to intimidate people and make them scared to, to, to even say a word about, you know, if they get treated unfairly or wrongly by the police. And, you know, like they were at my house today and I thought I was going to get arrested. And uh, the new landlord, she's sitting there slandering me, lying about me right to my face with the cops standing there saying that I walk around with weapons and I threaten people and all this other shit. You know, it's like these these people are, are the scummiest people on the fucking earth. These fried lamb fucking pieces of trash. So, that's where we're at now. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not scared. I'm not, I'm not afraid to die. I'm really not. So that's why I'm doing this, because if they kill me, they're just going to bring more attention on themselves. And IA already knows about what's going on. But, you know, I don't want anything to happen to anyone I care about. That's my biggest concern, you know. Like, I, I've lost everyone in my life, but I still care about them, even though I don't talk to them. I still care about my family, even though I don't talk to them. I don't want anything bad to happen to them. I want to apologize to a lot of them. I want to make things right for what I've done in the past. And I feel like I'm not even going to be able to do that now because I might get killed because of this. And I really don't know what else to do. But, um, I don't know. Just please share this. Please like it. We'll get it trending. Please, you know, that's the only thing I ask. If you see this, you know, do whatever you can to get it trending because the cops, you know, they're, they're going to keep treating people like this. They're going to keep doing this unless more people, you know, stand up for what's right. Uh, every day I have is a blessing, you know, because of God. And, uh, you know, sometimes I, 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 I think I shouldn't even be alive. But for some reason, I am. And I want to know why. And I don't think that uh, it's my time to die yet. I think I'm meant for something more. So, yeah. That's what's been happening to me for the last month. I've been getting harassed by the police, by my landlord, by her family, by her friends. Non-stop. All the fucking time. If anyone wants to talk to me about this, if anyone wants to ask me about this, if anyone wants to, you know, help me, because <laughs> I am a veteran, I am disabled, I would appreciate it so much. 
But um, now I'm going to end the video here because it's getting long, and I don't want to, you know, give up too much information because I've already given them way too much with all the catfishing bullshit. Because I'm a trusting person, you know. I trust people. I I love everyone, you know. Because God, yeah, God wants me to love everyone, so I have to love and accept everyone. That's just how I am. That's what I do. You know, I don't, I don't. I'm trying to make up for, you know, how bad I was. You know, I was just a real, a real bad person not too long ago. And if I didn't find sobriety, if I didn't reconnect with God. You know, I probably would be dead right now already because I probably would have died of an overdose. But I didn't. And now that I'm trying to get my life together, I can't even do that because I'm constantly getting harassed. I'm constantly getting, you know, drama put on me, you know, whether it's from the internet, whether it's I'm getting followed around, whether it's from the VA. You know, it's like everyone, like it's the, like all the cops, they're like sticking together, even like the VA police, you know, like no matter what I do, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty messy, you know, and I, I feel like I'm not safe in Myrtle Beach at all. I don't feel safe here and I want to move. But at the same time, I need this story to be told and I, these cops need to pay for what they've done to me. And so does my landlord because they have fucked with me for so hard for so long. But, um, like I said, I'm going to end the video here. If anyone has any questions, just ask me. I will answer them. If, uh, if you care about me or if you, you know, you want to make the, you want the police to pay, then, uh, you should share this video with as many people as you can. Like it as many times as you can. And I will, like I said, this is the truth. This is the God's honest truth. I swear on my relationship with God. I swear on it. My love for God, you know, I wouldn't lie. But, um, I don't know. I just hope I don't get killed before I accomplish what I'm meant to accomplish. And uh, I hope all of you are blessed. I really do. And I'm sorry if any of you are affected in a negative way by this. I really am. And I'm sorry for all the people I've hurt in the past. But, uh, you know, a lot of you I wanted to talk to you face to face and apologize that's the only reason why I haven't apologized to you yet and I'm sure some of you know who you are and I do deserve a lot of, I do deserve to apologize to a lot of you but uh, I just uh, I haven't had the time I want to do it face to face I don't want to do it over the phone I don't want to do it over Facebook I want to be able to I want you to be able to look in my eyes and tell that I'm sincere that I mean what I'm saying and I'm not just saying it. So, you know, I'm just letting you know. Okay. This is what's happening to me. Non-stop harassment from the police, from my landlord, from their friends and family, the cops' friends and family, the landlord's friends and family. It's just non-stop. And I just wanted to end. And I tried, I tried to do that today. I tried to make an arrangement with the guy, one of the guys from Friedland, and he promised me, he promised me that he would get the harassment to stop, but he didn't. It's still going on. It was still happening all day and all night. So this is why I'm making the video. This is why I'm going to take them to court. This is why I'm going to sue them. This is why I went to IA, because the harassment doesn't stop. It doesn't. It keeps going and going and going. But anyway, I hope everyone's blessed. God bless everyone. I hope everyone has a great life. And I will uh, hopefully get to apologize to those of you that I do an owe an apology to. But I don't know at this point. I don't know if I'm going to be alive tomorrow, to be honest with you. So who knows. But uh, I hope everyone's blessed. And I will talk to you guys when I can. I love everyone. Goodbye.